And I was so committed to becoming what I wanted my mom to see me be that that was the only way. That was the only thing. That was the only uh, thing that was going to happen at that time. And, and I, you know, I recent my album 1320, that was, you know, the album where I felt like I started to kind of like really start putting the love back into the music because 2020 is when I had my daughter. Mm. So I was in a dark place all the way from 2013 up into 2020, which is where I got the 13 and 20 from. So having my daughter, it kind of gave me that that newfound love, like that unconditional love. Like now I can love somebody unconditionally like my mom did me. Pop me, you already know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J Hill, was in the building. J Hill Podcast. Hey, we've been trying to do this for a long time. Yeah, man. I mean, shit, it's been a long time, but yeah. special guest in the building. Vito was here. Man, my brother, how you feeling? I'm all right, man. Vito, baby, was good. Nah, man, I'm good, baby. Um, I'm uh, two albums in, dropping an album in November, mm. Um, another one in February. Uh, so I'm... that's three projects within six months. So. You've been going crazy. Been going crazy. I'm kind of upset that we, we do it now because I feel like. I miss so many things. Yeah, man. You, it was crazy is I was talking to my my manager. I'm like, yo, we got to make this happen. But really, like, I don't even do interviews when I'm in album mode. Okay, so that makes we sense. Try, so we're trying to like squeeze it in because it's our meetings. and it's, So I was an traveling. exception. I like that. No, nah, I mean, yeah. I've been, you know, commuter homie, man. I've been watching you doing your thing. I Actually, I do watch the podcast. You Appreciate know that. So I love the energy. I love the, um, you know, it's like a conversation. So I thought that was pretty dope. I'm like, and I do a lot of interviews. And it just be kind of like so scripted. You feel me? Kind of feel like a, a job. No, nah, like, for come sure. On, you know what I mean? I just want to have a conversation. I um, It's crazy because, you know, <laughs> you <laughs> to the ones that's looking, you know, you watch these um, interviews and you hear them say, I'm a fan, I'm a fan of the show, I watch the show, and then you become that person you sitting in the chair with yeah. the people that you, you listen to and you're a fan of, and they be like, I'm a fan of... Nah, facts. And fan it's like, fan. it's super dope, bro. I appreciate it, man. Nah, I mean, the, honestly, man, these podcasts are really becoming something that's shaping, you know, the industry. Like, For sure. It's shaping, you know, that, that industry per se, even music. You know, because a lot of you know new artists get broken. They get broken on podcasts. Mm. You know, these these in, these podcasts play their new shit. Now you got you know a million motherfuckers just heard your new shit from this podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, radio is becoming obsolete. You feel so, me? So let me let's have fun with it then, since we're here. Would you choose radio or podcast? You got to be careful. Well, I mean, it just depends on what you're trying to get out of, right? So <laughs> the same answer. So uh, <laughs> no, so I mean, it's like, hey, look. You know, radio going radio gonna get you the shows book. Mm -hmm. You know, radio gonna get you the, the pub. They're gonna get you the, the spins. You get paid for that. Um, I feel like podcast is going to it's gonna it's gonna up your online presence. Mm. You know, now you got people online checking for you versus, you know, booking shows and things like that, which I feel like I mean, it has to be a balance in between too. Because honestly, you know, think about it. I get in the car and I don't turn the radio on, mm. I plug my phone up. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like that's when that's why it doesn't really, you know, boost your online presence like that. You get the streams, you get the spins, you get the bookings and things like that. But your song becomes bigger than you. Mm. It's like, damn, I heard the song, but I didn't know this was you because I ain't seen your face. Podcast gives the artist the opportunity to be seen. You know what I'm saying? To put put a face with the song. Damn. Wait, bro. Let's slow, slow down. Relax. Relax. You gotta relax. You gotta chill out. <laughs> you gotta chill out. So. The song becoming bigger than you. Mm -hmm. I feel like you got some experience with that, or or yeah, or, or, or do. do you? I do. Yeah. You had the big single. Um, shit, 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 shit. You. You got it. You got it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You got it. I don't want to fuck it up. No, nah, you got it. You got it. You're good. Big single. You got it. It, it started to pop on um, TikTok, TikTok at first. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then it just went crazy. Right. Do you feel like that song got bigger than you? Um, at one at one point, I think it did. Hmm. <laughs> Take my hat off. I got you. Okay, go ahead. So, um, honestly, not. Nah, I wouldn't even say that that's the song that um got bigger than me. I actually had a song uh, called Four Walls, mm. which actually went viral as well. Um, it's about to go gold now, and it, I dropped it in 2015. First of all, congratulations. Thank Hold you. up. Congrats. Congrats. Appreciate, congrats it. appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> that song got way bigger than me. Wow. You know, I'm like, this song, come out, walk into these schools, I'm like, like y'all listening to my record, don't even know who I am. Wow! Right? They, I'm as soon as the record dropped, though, ah, going crazy. Oh, that's him. 
that's a, that's a prime example of your record becoming bigger than you. Now, fast forward to you got it. You got it had a video. Okay. You got it had had a music video. That makes so sense. So people go search the song. They they not they watching the music video. So they say, oh. Okay. This buddy from YouTube who was fucking with the V mixes and the covers and shit. Y'all, I, I been rocking with him. So yeah. now, fast forward, I go to these schools. It's like, oh, bitch, that's Vito. Hey, okay. Hey, nigga, that's what that's the boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now nah, I wouldn't say that you got it got bigger than me, but Four Walls definitely did. I think I grew with you got it. You got it definitely like boosted my online presence, my monthly listeners on Spotify, monthly listeners on Apple Music, boosted everything. I'm almost at a million subscribers on YouTube. That's crazy. And, and, I mean, honestly, though, your your V-Mix is touching on that, right? Yeah, yeah. They go crazy. Nah, facts. Facts. <laughs> like, facts. I can't even hold you, man. V-Mix is shout out to everybody that's involved um, in creating those V-Mixes. But, man, let me tell you something. If you ever feel like you too good to do some, to, to take a record already and try to make it better or pay a homage, like you tripping. Nigga, that shit put so many eyes on my original music. Crazy. So tell me about, I, I did want to talk to you about, um, I did want to talk to you about, uh, we good? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just just speak up, man. Just let us know, man. <laughs> Appreciate you. Just let us know. Say that. But, um, and that's why I like this space. It's like, yeah. just, just say it. But, just um, say it. <laughs> but, uh. Speaking of the covers, right? Because that's essentially what they are. Facts. Did you always have success for that with that with the covers? Um, nah. Oh. I started my YouTube in 2010, right? I me- I remember doing covers to records. I would because and this is why I started to realize like music and real singers are really really unappreciated. Mm. People who can really get you know sing. Let's talk about and it. really blow. You feel me? Because nigga, I'm doing records. I think I'm doing Whitney Houston, and mm. I'm doing Hall and Oates, Stevie Wonder, nigga. I'm doing Sam songs you Cook. ain't supposed to touch. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing <laughs> Sam Cooke. I mean, it's getting it's getting what it's you know what it's getting. It's getting a little 300 views, a little in the beginning. In the beginning, right? So I'm like, and these these were all live, like straight in the in the in the studio. You hit a reverb in the room. This everything was just like, yo, let me let me show these motherfuckers I can really sing. Mm. And I'm like, damn, I be going, this motherfucker going crazy. But the minute I started tapping into the new shit, like the new songs, you know what I'm saying? The Trey songs when he was out doing his thing, the Chris Brown, the uh, uh, Usher, all this shit. When I started covering those records and just kind of doing my own thing and got in the studio, shit started taking off. So it just started taking off. So with that, it's like I had to kind of, I had to kind of say like, hey, you know what? Let me just make some shit that feel good. Because oh. it ain't about, trust me, I don't give a what nobody talking about. Oh, we, we got these real singers, boy. Don't, ain't nobody, don't, we don't, don't nobody care. They but really don't. It seems like, so first of all, right, just listening to you, you got me like feeling like a student in a, in a, in a classroom, like raising my hand, like, mm. hold on, I got a question, I got yeah. a question. So, because you're touching on so many cylinders of it, yeah. right? And you said you was doing these these real songs that people you could sing and you yeah, was hitting them, right? But it wasn't really hitting. It wasn't. It wasn't really get, catching the traction how it should have. You got into the, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but to me, I, I hear it as you got into the people that was like mm-hmm. more popular more at the popular time, at the time, right? Wasn't necessarily like you said, S- singing, singing, singing for but real, they popular, but they popular, and and I can, I can't. I can't understand as far as singer, right? Mm. As far as doing content, yeah, right. It's like you, you, you got to touch on the you, things yeah, that's I relevant. To, I had to dumb it down, and you had to, you had, had to, to dumb it down. You had to talk. You had to sing what was relevant at the time. Exactly. Talk to me about the frustration just, be, just before you understood what you had to do, mm-hmm. and it started popping for you, of being consistent at your covers, mm-hmm. singing, not really knowing that you're singing, mm-hmm. but not really getting the recognition and, and then yeah. that, that transition of, okay, I got to do this because it makes yeah. sense. Well, the thing is, it's hard because when you get somebody who's passionate about what they do, right? Mm. It's almost like a rapper who can spit, and I'm talking about his metaphors is crazy to the point where you got to stop the song and like- Rewind it back. Like, what did he <laughs> just say? It's like telling him, no, yo, yo, you doing too much, bro. Like, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that, man. Don't make him think too much. Be simple. And now he got to go in a booth. One and two and three and four, five. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like you dumbing down my talent because they can't comprehend it. That's the same. That's the same thing that happens with singing. We can be, we can blow, sing, go up there, hit these high notes, falsetto notes, long notes, and everything. But guess what? They don't understand it. You can 
per- perfect example. Jasmine Sullivan can run from here to can run from here to London. Guess what they guess what they probably told her? Mm. Can't nobody do them runs while they're in the club drunk. That's crazy. Dumb it down. Jasmine Sullivan. Come on, you feel me? That's a good one. It's like, come on, Jasmine. It's, it, in my opinion, she's prop, she's top five singers, you know, probably top three. That's a good one. And she just now got her, she just now got a Grammy? That's a good one. Come on, man. Mm, that's Stop. crazy. <laughs> so don't don't be don't be talking about some, oh, we ain't got no real singers. Yo, we been had real singers, but that's not what y'all. That's not what y'all listening to. Okay, we here then. Fuck it. Let's let's go there. You open the door. You feel me? Like <laughs> Diddy, right? Diddy say R and B is dead. Mm. Diddy ain't done R and B in years. Mm. Even Diddy. niggas who did, even niggas who was doing R and B back in the day, quote unquote real R and B, don't even do R and B the same no more. They do it different. They mm. do it like today. What is today? R and B. It's a feel. It's a it's a vibe. R and B can be a vibe. It can be a conversation. It could be whatever. I mean, it could be some shit that stir up some emotion, stir up a, a conversation. It's not always about, you know, the slow tempo. Because I honestly, in my in my opinion, R and B can be considered, you know, fat. It could be you could be you could have a, a up tempo R and B record. You could have a slow R and B record. In my opinion, it's all about the context. Mm. Of what are you talking about in this song? Okay, rhythm. Every song has rhythm. Every song has R and B rhythm and blues. Every song has rhythm. Mm. So that's why you can't say, hey, uh, a slow song is considered more an R&B song than this mid-tempo song or this up-tempo song because you are, basically because you are you are conditioned to think that R&B should always be slow. Right there. Damn, this is getting crazy, bro. This is crazy. <laughs> All right, so do you think, because I'm not even going to just, just say Diddy. I've even been, um, I have to hold myself accountable because there's been times where I'd be like, man, mm-hmm. music just don't hit like it hit before. Right. Do you think the culture or the people, if we had to um, uh, compare them to anybody, okay. do you think the people is like that old hater? Like, you know how the old person always be like, man, you well, know, back in my day. Yeah, 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 they, yeah. They yeah. can't really see change. So, right. And that's the thing, right? Um, I said this before. You know, every everything is different now. Rap is different. Pop music is different. Rock music is different. Um, R&B, the core, the core essence of R&B is always going to be the same, mm. which is ex- to exude love, passion, emotion, storytelling, things like that. Um, but let's face it, this generation expresses love differently. We express it different. You know, we don't, we don't, you know, and not necessarily saying myself, but we don't stand in the rain and sing no more. You know, we don't. We don't reach for the stars with a silk shirt flying open. You know what I'm saying? That shit cool. <laughs> and no, and don't get me wrong, it's it's dope. I love it. Yeah. But it's different. It's different now. You know, and it's like and it's like if a person doesn't matter how good your R how good your song is, it's almost like if you don't look R and B, you're not R and B. Okay, I get it. Right. Then you say what does that look like, right? Mm. Right. What does that look like? Well, so what does R and B look like? Leather pants? You know what I'm saying? Like, you people, feel are me? Going, people are going to hate me, but we, I'm sorry. I didn't want to get this deep, bro, but damn, like, shit, fuck. You know, it, isn't that the world, right? Even mm-hmm. outside of R&B, like, you have a child, mm-hmm. right? I have a child, and love as parents look different. Mm-hmm. The way we love our children. Yeah. If our child come up to us and say, they don't love who we think they should love. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. We embrace them differently. Right. At one point in time, they weren't getting that love. It was so much pushback. And even right. when you see things like shit, let's say it, um, um, Dwayne Wade, uh, right, and his yeah, daughter, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. What's, what's what's her name now? I think it's uh, uh, Zaya. Z- Z- Zaya. Zaya? Zaya? Zaya, I believe. Excuse me if I'm getting wrong, but even how he embraced his mm-hmm. daughter saying, okay, if this is your truth, I'm okay with that. Right. It looks so different to the world, so mm-hmm. he rejected it. Right. Same with R&B. Yeah, it's different. It's, mm. it's not the same, you know, it's not the same as the 90s. Or, mm. You know, it's not the same as the 2000s. Even 2005, you know what I'm saying? You know the B2K, you know what I'm saying? The B2K era. That 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 you know what I mean? It's it's just not the same. And because it looks different to you, it's easy to reject. It's it. easy to reject something you don't truly understand. Damn. Okay, so it's like you don't understand the, you know, you don't understand. It can't really follow the cadence that we use in R&B songs now. Mm. You know, it's not a. It's a. No, 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 no. Yeah. You know, it's like. But it's it's still it, the message is the same. 
Damn. You know what I'm saying? The message is the same. You just you just can't follow it. And to succeed, you always got to like change with you the times. You have to. Right? One you of your, have to. One of your mentors. Um, R. Usher. Kelly. R. Kelly was one of the ones who was really great at that. At being able to adapt with the time of music and how it changed. Very unfortunate. To yeah, be, he, the position that he's in, but you know you gotta you gotta you gotta say you gotta say what it is. You, you ain't know? got enough time, Rita. You gotta <laughs> relax. You gotta chill. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you gotta relax. That's just bro. one of those. He's one of those ones as well, man. Talking about R. Kelly, right? Yo, this episode is sponsored by the Morning Meetup, man. Shout out to my guy David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created the Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen. As an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I see you there. And But because you are close to Usher, I, I, I'll um, give the question more so to him. But when you think about these great artists, because right. like... I can be good, I can be great, but mm -hmm. you have legendary, mm -hmm. you have great, you have right. good, right? Talking about these legendary artists, like R. Kelly, um, Kanye West, uh, Michael Jackson. Right. Um, and so, and the list goes on. It's always something that seems similar. Mm -hmm. Like they got a lot going on. Like they, like you know, their mind. That's good. That's you know good. what I'm saying? And I'm like, I'm wondering, mm -hmm. what do you, th do you ever think like, damn, this guy is so talented, but, is because he's, I don't want to say missing something, but mm. I don't even know where the, the well, fill in that gap. I think, I think, man, I think the different layers of talent and different layers is because, like, to be to be a genius, you got to be borderline crazy. You got to be borderline insane. Exactly what I'm trying to say. Right. Um, and some people may think it's insane for, you know, you to say to yourself and you to tell them, look, I got $100,000 and I'm going to spend every dollar of this $100,000 to make this work. <laughs> I don't care if I go broke. I don't care if I get homeless. Look, people will look at you like you crazy mm -hmm. until you do it. Mm. So you got, imagine, imagine, you know, these artists and these writers who are now legendary, who are great. Imagine how many times somebody told them, you, you're you not going to be that. That's stupid what you're doing. You almost got to be missing something. Yeah. Because you to not listen to everybody. Yeah, it's like, yo, because to, cause to be honest with you, these people could really be coming from a, a genuine place. Like, look, I know you passionate about what you're doing, mm. and I don't want you to fall flat on your face. Nah, nah, uh-uh. I know this is going to work. Man, look, look at the statistics, bro. Like, doing that just ain't smart. Man, I don't care. I'm going, I'm going to do it. Mm, mm, you know mm. what I'm saying? But it's that type of resilience that you can't lose, bro. <sighs> you can't guy. lose with that type of, with that mentality. Let me show you something, right? Because I got different... um different uh notepads right mm. and i wanted to talk to you about this and you said it it says resiliency mm -hmm. yeah. literally like, i feel like your career your entire career scratch that your entire life right 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 is built off of resiliency persistency and commitment and consistency yeah wanted, i wanted you to talk to me about that because i mean the people know the story yeah you lost your moms i think you was in the middle of recording um yeah the voice the voice yeah she, yep, she passed away while i was actually on the show Tell me the just the importance of just keep going. Oh man. With everything getting in your way. Yeah, I mean, dog, it's it's probably it's probably one of the toughest times in my life. Cause mm -hmm. it's like you didn't want you nothing if, if cause at first everything was going so right. You know, I'm on a voice, I'm in front of in front of fifteen million people singing. Um, I'm having a good time, I'm meeting these great people. I've met my, you know, somebody I look up to, and then all of a sudden, bam. Mm. It's like somebody, you know, writing you a you know a check for ten million dollars a day coming back and saying, Oh, my bad. That wasn't for you. My bad. That was for somebody else. It's like somebody sweeping a rug. Yeah, it's like you feet. snatching a rug from under my feet. Like I'm like, you know what I mean? So what it did for me, me me to keep going was not only my mother's actual dying wish, like verbatim, um, 
it was a distraction. Mm. It was a distraction from the pain that I was going through and the pain that I was enduring at, at the time and the pain that I see my brothers going through. I, I could like literally escape everything. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be obsolete. You wouldn't be able to get in touch with me for weeks because I'm just, I'm just doing music. I'm recording, you know, so only it person that could be a coping mechanism. Yeah. It's a cope. It was a coping mechanism. Um, and I was so committed to becoming what I wanted my mom to see me be that that was the only way that was the only thing that was the only uh, thing that was going to happen at that time. And, and I, you know, I recent my album 1320, that was, you know, the album where I felt like I started to kind of like really start putting the love back into the music because 2020 is when I had my daughter. Mm. So I was in a dark place all the way from 2013 up into 2020, which is where I got the 13 and 20 from. So having my daughter, it kind of gave me that, that newfound love, like that unconditional love. Like now I can love somebody unconditionally like my mom did me. And, you know, somewhat feel that void in my heart that has been missing for so long. I mean, that did it feel it all the way? No, but it it feels it feels it enough to where I can finally say I'm back to myself a little bit now. You know, having my daughter and things like that. So um, everything that transpired within my life from that time to now, bro, I wouldn't change anything. People you had to be me. resilient through yeah, it. Yeah, right? you had to be like, I, and then it forced me to grow up fast, bro. You know, because you know, God, my bad. No, you good. But you know, good. you know, niggas, man, especially black men. You know, we will call our mama to we 50, 60 years old, but we we we'll call our mama for something. You know, when you lose her, you ain't got that luxury no more. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, ma, let me hold, let me hold this. I pay you back. I can't. You can't call your mama once she gone. So you got to grow up fast. You got to figure it out. Vito, can I, can I have a moment of honesty, really, real quick? You know how it's, they, like you always, you always can find good in a bad situation, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Let me tell you something. I just want to be honest, right? How we're like back and forth. And missing each other made me really frustrated, right? Yeah, yeah. And it got on my fucking nerves. But the the bigger picture in that mm. was I really started to actually love you. Yeah. As yeah. much as I hated you, because yeah, man, yeah, right? Yeah. A man like this fuck. You can try me, yo. But <laughs> no, nah, for, nah, for real, right? <laughs> Nigga, but, I get it. I get it. But I like just I so I did research once one time, of course, to do the interview. But when we kept like you know pushing it back, I kept just having to do research to like right. to re re trigger my mind and and, and just re see. And I started to really understand you, and and, yeah. and it was like damn, I knew you it was like I was studying you, like yeah. really though, like not just for the interview, but nah, facts. So when I hear you say it, it, it hit, it means so much more, and it's like it's just making my heart like damn, yeah. like I can see you being my friend because like you really been through it, yeah, and man. I can see it. Yeah, people don't understand, bro, like. People ask me, yo, if you could change anything, would you would you bring your mom back? And I'm not like, nah, mm. nah, nah, nah. Honestly, my mom was too beautiful of a person to even to even have to you know go through COVID and go through this and go mm. through it. Like these the, the problems that we have here on Earth, she's living way better than any of us. Mm. This guy, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, she needs she's where she should be. You know, it made me who I am and made my brothers who they are. Absolutely not. I don't wouldn't dare put her through the, the horrors of this world again. Your words are genuinely bringing me joy. Like that's right. I, like it's really making like if we was outside with clap like we on a football field. Yeah. Like it's genuinely like yeah, right, man. Um, it's cut from my heart, man. I wanted to talk to you about because you was on a voice, yeah, right. If you don't mind, we could talk. Oh, so I'm gonna take a drink too. Mm, mm, mm. I don't think men talk about this. Boy, you, godly, what Jesus Christ? Go you ahead, were, you were working on a voice, so you were chasing a dream, mm -hmm. and I don't know, but I can almost picture. You kind of like putting yourself first. Oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And you missing time with your mom. Absolutely. Oh, you, uh, you say it's, that. It's, it's, it's things that you your mom probably want to do, but you like not pushing it off. But you really just focus. You yeah. locked in. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you lose her. Yeah. Can you Ooh. tell me about <laughs> the times what you were thinking? Like, because it's almost like I was so selfish, mm -hmm. and then look what happened. Like, tell me about that, because I don't think you ever talked about that specifically. Yeah, I have it. Um, so. I got so caught up in just trying to be successful. Mm. I thought the fact that me sending money back home to my mom was kind of, you know, feeling that, hey, ma, I ain't there. That's what we all dream about. But, you know, look, here goes some bread. Ooh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting paid from these shows. And, it's, and the third, here goes some bread. 
you know, put some food in the house, pay your phone bill, pay the rent, whatever. I got so caught up in just like being, you know, in the now and just chasing my dream and chasing my passion. I truly, I truly like missed out on some beautiful times. Mm. Um, I didn't even, a lot of people don't even know it, but I got the call. Uh, I, I never forget my mom had asked me to come home for something. Um, it was one Thanksgiving. This was the, the last Thanksgiving we had. And I didn't go because I had something to do with music. I had some more stuff to do with music. I couldn't make it. She was extremely mad. I made it up. I made it up for her on Christmas, but it's not even about that. I, she wanted to see me on Thanksgiving too, and I should have made that happen. Um, so fast forward, you know, back on the show, doing my thing, bam, bam, bam. I get a call. Now, mind you, I hadn't been back home. You know, we've talked, but I hadn't. I hadn't seen her in months. Now, what, my, mind you, she's 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 sick. She's battling. You know her sickness. You know she has my little brother there. She has my older brother there. You know I'm sending money back to you know everybody. At the time she we ain't had no paper. Like even my me and my manager we was fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So if I, you know, if I hit if I was able to hit the show, go on the show and actually make some bread, I'm sending that thing back because I'm like I'm good over here. I'm good. I want to make sure y'all good while I'm on the road. But I got a call that my mom had been rushed to the hospital. This was I was in Tennessee. I was wait, no, I was in I was in Georgia. She lived in Tennessee. Um, so I'm like, what you mean she got rushed to the hospital? Mind you, she had been asking me to like come home and see me for a little bit. So I got the call. Bam! I'm like, hey, yo, this, you should the hospital. All right, cool. I'm gonna get up. I think I had like, I think I had like maybe like sixty, seventy dollars or something like that, and I was able to catch the mega bus to um, to Tennessee, nigga. I was fucking about forty five minutes late. Mm. Didn't even get to see it. Then she didn't get to take a. I didn't get to see her take a last breath. No nothing. And that was that really taught me that this shit is this shit here. This shit should not supersede you spending time with your loved ones and the mm. people you care about. Because I was doing what I was doing and you know chasing my dreams, chasing my career. That I forgot that damn. My mom's time is really limited. I should be spending. I should be spending way more time, and I still blame myself for, the, for that shit for forever. I still blame myself. It's like damn, I didn't even get to hold her hand, give her no kiss, ooh, all because I was, you know, locked in. I was like, yo, I gotta get it. I gotta get it. There's no days off, and you know, time is definitely the biggest currency. To, you can't get that back, right? Yeah, and, um, no amount of money. And I wanted to tap mm -hmm. into. Just as a man, right? Your brother in the bed mm -hmm. when she passed, mm -hmm. right? Like they were super close. Yeah, super. super um, close. how do you deal with all of those feelings coming from so many places, but still having your own feelings and still having to push forward? It's hard, bro. Even now, like, you know, my little brother, like, that's my that's my baby. You feel me? Like that's love him to death. And it's like he's still he's still in that rut. Mm. You know, he's still in that rut. You know, he still needs that every day checking up on. He still needs that every day, how you feeling, what you doing, what you need. You know, and he's grown. You know what I mean? Two kids. But I understand everybody's healing process is different. Everybody takes, it takes longer, you know? Mm. Something, ha something has to happen in his life to shift his heart, to shift his mental. It just hasn't happened yet. You know they say My daughter shifted my mental. Right. And I was gonna say, you know they say check on a strong friend, right? But mm -hmm. I still feel like it's some part of you that's being that strong friend. And I'm trying to mm -hmm. tap into that, yeah. right? We coming up on um ten years, um, in a few months mm -hmm. uh of the anniversary of your mom passing. Mm -hmm. When nobody is around, right? And you don't have to be strong, how are you able to keep it together? What are some of your thoughts in those times? Oh man. It's really just, I got to be here for other people. But how do you, even that is not, how, how do mean, you get through with that? Because that's hard. That's got to be hard. It's very hard. But, you know, hey, look, I've, I was always told, man, I'm the middle I'm the middle boy. I, I'm the middle boy. I got an older brother, young brother. I'm the glue mm. that, you know, keeps people, you know, keeps it, people together. And, yo, you checked on such and such. You checked on such and such. You know, you know, truthfully, don't nobody really check on me like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because they look at it like, oh, Beto up, he good money. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, he good. But, man, please. 
So how are you though coming into ten years? I I mean, honestly, it don't get no easier, bro. Mm. It don't get no easier. It's just I just learn to live with it, learn to accept it, and learn to live with it. Um, You know, I have my little every every year around the same time, but I have a little breakdown. You know what I'm saying? I get that I get that off my chest. You know, as a man, respectfully, you know, so I get that off my chest because it's a lot of things that I've done. You know, a lot you know a lot of money that I've made that I would have loved to share with her. You know, would have loved to her to meet her her granddaughter. You feel me? So it's like it's it's definitely it's definitely hard, my boy. Like I ain't gonna lie to you. Anybody can tell anybody sit here and tell you they know what it feel like to lose a parent and they got both their parents. Yo, shut can't up. even imagine. You know what I'm saying? Like chill. <laughs> talk, talk to me about some of the burdens that was left with you from that. Right? I feel like a lot of times we aren't taught to cope. Yeah. So, so how how did how has that affected your relationship with women? Mm. Oh what? man. I was yeah 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 I was fuck I was like I was not I wasn't good, mm. but it wasn't it wasn't you know, it was kind of like I just didn't want to love nobody as much as I loved, you know my mom and, and I end up losing you, whether it be Damn. whether it be to another to another guy, or you know whatever, I just I just didn't want to feel that feeling again because I know I love hard, you know so when you know now, my fiance. You know Congratulations, saying? my guy. Appreciate you, my boy. Let's go. You know, I'm now next. My I'm fiance, next. Yeah, my fiance was that. She was that. Like she's that. Like crutch that you know, a nigga be needing. You know, when you, I can talk and just I go off vent and she just listen. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's and that it took a long time for me to actually say that about her. Mm. Like, bro, we man, we was together damn near ten years before a nigga said, "Hey, will you marry me?" Mm. Because I just was, I just Scared. was unsure. Oh. You know, Sheesh. I was unsure. You know, what I mean, didn't know what 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 was to come. Um, I just just didn't. Yeah, definitely. I was I was a little boy. He's you know, was like, hey, you go. Out. And what I but what I wasn't gonna do was because I knew niggas know that niggas know when when she's the one. Mm. You just like you said, it's okay to just say I was scared. I was unsure. You know, granted, I still wanted to have a look. I still wanted to have a good time too. You know, but but who am I to continue this pattern? That I'm pretty sure she went through in her life, you know, because of what I went through in her life, in my life that ain't got nothing to do with her. I, you know, I may, you know, I, she has to suffer. Mm. She can't, you know, she can't do what she want to do. She, she wants to, she wants to feel, you know, secure. She wants to feel this way. You know, it's not always about saying, "Hey, yo, I got it. You good? You, what you need?" Nah, security comes in different forms. Mm. You know, and I think that once I realized that, it was kind of like, why not? Literally, just just that simple. Why not? Get how was you know what I'm saying? How is the like? I'm just trying to make the two correlate, right? How how are you m- making that time for her now? Are you intentionally mm-hmm. spending time? Are you are you doing it too much? Is mm-hmm. it annoying? How is that? What yo? <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm a I'm a social nigga, bro. Like I be, I like to get out. I like to be around. I like to meet people. That's how I really. That's how I really kind of get a lot of my inspiration for songs. Mm. Um. So to to answer your question, yeah, shit can get annoying sometimes, hmm. you know. But I from like, you to her, yeah. Well, from 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 her to me, from okay. me to her, okay. You know what I'm saying? Whatever case, you're like, well, let's do this, let's do that. I'm like, oh, like, oh, so you so you're not really overly no, affectionate still. I'm I guess. still not. I'm still not that way. No, I'm still not that way. And um, it's you know, I always you gotta just teach me how to love you. You know, I mean, in all these years, mm. obviously. I still don't know, but yes. I, I feel like that's every man. I feel like that's a lot of men, you know, because people always say, "Hey, oh, do you know my love language is this." You don't know what your love language is going to be in five years. Mm, so it's why don't changing. yeah? Why don't why don't you teach me? Why don't you teach me and I teach you for the season? You know, <laughs> because in five years you might you might not, you might not. You might not like traveling. Teach me how to love you in every season in that every we get season. together. Yeah, because it's different. Oh, my God. You know, even with me, I, I, you know, I need different love when I'm happy. I need different love when I'm sad. I need different love when I'm unsure. It's like it's never, never going to be the same. Oh, my. First of all, you know there's no way we could do Like, there's no way we can do this in the time we got. It's no <laughs> way. Bro. It's, no, it's, it's not even fair. Nah. Like, we ain't even talk about... 
I mean, we, you know, we got big you up. You wrote for so many artists, yeah. the Ushers, the Chris Brown, the bro, show. Come on, and we do we part can't, two, baby. We, you come, go to five. Nah, we gonna make this work. Let's bro. get it. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy, because it's so, before we even get there. So much about you, mm. right? I, and I was gonna ask you, do you think that being the workhorse you are, right? Mm. And and, and it's, it is some correlation to it because in my mind, it makes so much sense to okay, you lose your mom, so you will automatic automatically pick up what you were lacking, but mm -hmm. you kind of was the same because that's who you are, right? right. We are who we are, yeah, yeah. right? And I was wondering, when we working, right, we always say it's for our family. Yeah. Is it really for our family? Um, A piece of it is, mm. you know? What piece is that? Stability. Because like you said, your mother wanted Tom. Yeah. Um, I think for me, I would say, when you when I say I'm working for my family, I'm working for my family to, to eliminate the, the problem that we all have, the, the stress poverty. that we all have is poverty. Mm. Being able to live comfortably. I ain't saying you got to be super rich. I ain't saying, but I don't, listen here, I've just passed five years, six years, you know, I've just starting, I'm just, just starting to wake up and not, and not worrying about how the rent go get paid. I'm not worrying about if we're going to eat today. That now, says a lot about you, the work ethic. People don't You know what I'm understand. saying? We talking about five, six years. We talking about five years ago. Already that's not, that's not that long ago. Exactly. So it's like that's when I when I say I'm working, I, I want I want, you know, my lady and my, my family to have a peace of mind that when you wake up, you on go. Mm. Your your mind is already running on how to become the next big thing. I don't need you, I don't need your focus to be thrown off because you don't know how the rent go get paid. Mm. You don't know you know if your if you know if your car not gonna get paid, you don't know if the daycare bill gonna get paid. Like nah, that's what I'm working for. On the, on the flip side, for me, that's just my happiness. That's my escape. That's there my getaway. Go. You and, know what I'm saying? Like, and my happiness is truly being a provider. And that's what I was gonna go into, right? Mm. You know, just as a man, we and yeah. <laughs> so that we can have this conversation. Yeah. As a as men, we always be like, man, I'm working for my family, I'm working mm. for you. you tell, yeah. That's what we tell our wives, our, right. our girl, fiance, right? And then I had to think one day, I'm like, how much of this of is yeah, for how me? Much how much of this right. is really selfish? Yeah. Right? Because honestly, I we could be. I say it's fifty fifty. We could be good, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And come on, you could do a platinum right now. Right. And you could be good. Your family could be good. Y'all could escape poverty. Yeah. Why are you going to stop? Nah. Okay. Exactly. So nah. How, how much is it really for us versus our family? Because you you never. I mean, I say I say it's fifty fifty fifty. Okay, that's not like, bad. It's like this. I right, fifty percent of of you know my whatever my mental is geared towards making sure y'all good. Okay. The other fifty percent is geared to me making sure that I'm good and that I feel good. And my I look legacy good. good. And but my everything, legacy. like everything. You know what I'm saying? I eat good. Y'all eat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, hey, look, of course I want to go out and spurge and do this and buy that. Ooh, yes, that's that's what I want to do. But what I'm also going to do and what I have to do is take care of y'all. Mm. And and honestly, me being able to do both makes me very happy. And so that's what I was going to say. Can, can we be honest? Yeah. Don't kill me for this. If, <laughs> no, if, if, if my girl watches, don't kill me. <laughs> I would say, you say 50-50, I'm going to say. Yeah. I'm gonna say like 80 20. 80 20. And I say that because. 20 on what? On what end? Of the family side. 20. Right? Okay. I'm gonna tell you why. Hey, well, you might get a trophy for that. Because, like you said, me me taking care of my family, yeah. I would be lying to say if that wasn't a pride or ego yeah. thing. Yeah. That's for me. Yeah. Me being it is, able to. It is. It is, a, it is an ego thing. I'm gonna definitely. be real. Me being able to say, yep. like, my success, you get. you. You enjoy the fruits of that. You enjoy Absolutely. the fruits of my labor. So it's like my success is going to equal to our right. success. So the, yeah, right. So my thing, I would, what I would do, it's a, it's a pride thing, you know. It's a, it, it 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 definitely feeds your ego. But what I would say, you know, me and my, I would never say, um, you know, to my shorty, I'd be like, hey, yo, if it wasn't for if it wasn't for me, oh no, nah, no, nah. yeah, yeah, See, yeah, I yeah. wouldn't say that. Nah, See, hell no. I would say something like this: How much the mortgage is? <laughs> Come on, let's go. How much your car note is? Hmm. How much? It gotta get paid. It gotta get paid. You don't. You don't know, baby. You don't. Know. I don't want you to know. You don't have to know. Mm. And that's basically me saying, baby, look. You want her to be happy. Come on, baby. Listen. Hold on. Let's calm down. I got a lot on my plate. You know. We can do that, but let me handle this first. Mm. All right. Oh, you don't ever want. Look. You know why? 
I was just gone for two weeks. I brought back that bag, didn't I? You know what I'm saying? And you ate all. You, 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 got, you got it's a like, lot that was in that bag. And so don't get me wrong, baby. Look, <laughs> I came home. House was clean. <laughs> no, I came to the crib. House was clean. Favorite meal cooked. You know what I'm saying? Back rub, feet rub. And I appreciate all that. So that's the thing. Baby, I'm doing this. And you doing that, baby. It's a team. It's a team for sure. It's a team effort. And it is, but I, I, I just say that's why I say eighty twenty because even just being yeah, real, like me being thing, able to, I get that. Me being able to yeah. get you a bag is lit. Be able to go out like, and spend you know seven, eight, ten bands on a bag. Be like, you know what I'm saying? That feel right, good for you know me too. I'll be like, nah, lying. you deserve that. You know what I'm saying? It feels great. So you know you what? Feel it me feels like, great. And don't get I'm me glad wrong. we's being able to be honest. Nah, here. we yeah, we can be honest, <laughs> and it feels great. Honestly, and I've heard women say it too. Like, hey, yes, it feels really great for my man to do these things for me and not think twice about it. That feeds That's their ego. That's all I want to be able to do for you, baby. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> nah, that feeds their ego and their pride. It's like, because I got a, they like, yo, I got a real provider. I got somebody who going to make sure I'm good. Like, at the end of the day, and I'm not just doing this for me. I, mean, I invest in my shorty. He, bro, boo, oh, you want to start this business up? Who? Yeah, uh, here you go. Because guess what? Baby, you got I want you to have your own. Now, mm. y'all never want you to be able to say you can't do this on your own. Because we get we can get bored with each other. Be like, look, you know what? I want something new. But guess what? We started we started some shit when we did it together. Built some shit up. So you good money. And whatever you want, you said it before. You got it. You got it. Come on, man. <laughs> no stop. pun intended. You, know? you, st- you understand? Come on. Yo, um, oh, man. Yo, we didn't even get into the music shit yet. Like, I want to talk... Uh, I want to talk. Um, what's the song you did for Chris Brown? Uh, the recent one, Warm Embrace. Not that one. The um, uh, the old one, the Freaky Friday. Yeah, I With didn't understand. Disney? Yeah, I, I, that, I hear you. Mm. I hear Freaky Friday. How? Like, wh- where did that come from? Ah, man. I well, for real. The the actual concept was already uh, in place. Okay. Shout out to Lil Dicky. He um had the concept already in place. He's basically if you if you know the movie um. I think where the the sister swap yeah. or mm-hmm. whatever like that. So that's the, basically the concept he went with. Um, but where I came in was to finish the record for Chris. Um, he wanted somebody to finish it who who knew what Chris would say, um, how he would sound, and things like that. And I had already written for him before. And one of my homies reached out and was like, "Hey, I gotta play. I gotta play for you." I'm like, "Yo, what's up?" He say, um, "Little Dicky." When as a matter of fact, he called him. He said, "Dave." He said, Dave, um, he got this record that he wants to get Chris Brown on and things like that. And I'm like, first of all, who is Who the fuck is who Dave? Is Dave? And he's <laughs> like, like, no, okay. Lil Dicky. Lil, I was like, ah, oh, okay, yeah, 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 for sure. So he was like, what? He needs he needs to finish it up, like, today, like, within the next hour. And so, mind you, I'm like, I got the studio at the crib. I'm like, shit, what's sitting that? That's how it is. I'm, I'm like, like sitting that, you know what I'm saying? Like, he sent me his ideas and everything, and I went in and I did my thing. Uh, sent it back to him within like a, I was probably like an hour and a half. Sent it back to him. He was like, "My goodness, bro, this is amazing. Thank mm. you so much." And next thing you know, bam. And it was easy. It wasn't hard. Easy. For it you. wasn't hard. It wasn't hard at all. It mm. was. So you was already past that phase because I think I, I heard you talk about how, when, as a writer, and I can mm. assume that you try to write for somebody else yeah. instead of writing for yourself and hoping that they like it. Right. So were you already the, past that stage. Yeah, I'm past that stage. If okay. I, if I, if somebody says, "Hey," at that time, were you past that stage? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because okay. I never. It was never any success when I go in a studio and try to sound exactly like Chris Brown or sound exactly like this artist. You got to go in and make a great record. That is the basis of writing songs. Mm. Make a great record. But that can get hard though, right? Because yeah. I think I seen um, who the fuck was it? It can, but I mean, I think you have a better shot at landing a placement with a great record versus trying to make a great record tailored for one person and keeping the the greats to you, yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like if I wrote a if I wrote a song for you, and it sounds exactly like you, I can't go play this song for this artist over here. Because guess what he gonna say? This sound exactly like. Oh, Jay. so now you can ship it. Yeah, ship it now it's oh, like if they okay. say no. Oh, this is a great I'm record, done. though. It's a great record. We're going to keep shopping it, and it eventually will land somewhere. Damn, that makes sense. And That's with, hard. And listen, man, anybody watching, this is the thing with the with the little Dicky joint. If you if you ain't prepared to go right then, you probably going to miss a lot of opportunities. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you ain't ready, if, invest in your home studio. Invest in your recording equipment. That way, and teach yourself. That way, you ain't got to... 
Because if I'd have had to call a, a, an engineer like, yo, bro, you free? I got to cut this such and such for this record. Ah, uh, bro, I ain't going to be free to after six. Damn, that's too long. You know what I'm saying? But I got my own setup. I taught myself how to record. I was able to go in there, boop, bop, bam, send that thing off, and here we are. Mm. But if I wasn't prepared, I would have missed that opportunity. They said success is really prepar when preparation yep. meets opportunity. Yep, right? exactly. that's, that's all success is, Absolutely. so you got to always stay ready. They be asking me, like, yo, mm -hmm. what's the schedule like for the interview? Bro, I don't know. A nigga can hit me right now and right. do it. And you gonna, I'm pulling up, yeah. <laughs> it's just like that. It's simple exactly. as that. I don't know. Leave me the fuck alone. Yo, um, oh, I got it. Uh... Tiny Desk. Ah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. You, you, for the <laughs> niggas that don't know, come on, like, yeah, first of all, wake up. If you don't know, you're playing yourself. You beside Eric Bellinger. Yeah, the homie. One of the goats. That's the homie. Amazing at what he does. You got to lead Usher. Come on. What yeah. the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah, What yeah. was you thinking? <laughs> hey, man, I just didn't want to fuck up. <laughs> I can imagine that. <laughs> I mean, for me, it was kind of like, ah, uh, show. It was like, well, another one of those things. You were given a spotlight. How you gon how you gon mm. how you gonna make this spotlight bigger than what it is? Okay? When he said, Go ahead, Vito. <laughs> Where you just thinking at that moment? I was like, hey, you bet not, nigga. You better go. They watching you, nigga. So it's like, man, and the window was so small too. It was probably like less than 10 seconds. Don't miss that window of opportunity. Don't <laughs> miss that window, man. Don't miss that window of opportunity. But it's like we up there with the I'm with Eric Bellinger, amazing. Usher. Amazing, the band amazing. It's like when you're surrounded by that much like talent and just greatness, bro. Like it's it's impossible for you not to do good. Like mm. if you don't do good, bro, you, you gotta you gotta kind of like go back to the, you gotta like go perform at some open mic nights and get get rid of them butterflies. Can we have a moment of silence for that really quick? Thank you, cause y'all killed it, yo. <laughs> My I'm boy. just saying, bro. <laughs> for real though, did you think? Like, granted, it's tiny that so yeah, but yeah. that was a moment. People were nah, watch this, like that, like, like that's legendary now. Yeah, it, it, what it, what else it did for me? The other thing that it did for me, man, is it kind of the people that saw us on the Voice together, Usher and I. They like, yo, I remember that was Buddy that was on the Voice for Usher. So that kind of brought that kind of brought that that side and that you know that that picture back up. Like, yo, if it's Yo, it's so dope to see them back on stage again together. Or for the people that missed it, right? Or the people that missed it, they went back oh. and watched the episode. Like, oh, wow, they've they been knowing each other for a long time. Oh, my God. And, you know, it feels really good just to be recognized like, hey, us, us just like, yo, y'all y'all are the future of, regardless of what anybody says, about the state of R&B, about the state of what people think, what what they think R&B should be. You guys are the future. Like, y'all y'all, the future of doing this. Last question, bro. I promise. I'm I'm cutting it close. You 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 still grinding. Mm -hmm. Um, you know you have some people that might say, um, Vito fell off, mm -hmm. right? Because all they hear was the single, right? right? The the mm -hmm. you got it. Yeah. But you know you're working constantly putting out oh, music. Absolutely. How do you feel to? <laughs> To that audience that don't know no better, because the mm. people that's in the industry, we understand, we right, see right, it. Right, right, right. But the people that don't know no better, where would you say you are in your career? Or talk yeah. about that. Well, I'm I'm in a, a really really good place in my career right now. Mm. Um, you got it. Happened to be such a massive hit, which is two and a half times platinum now, almost three times platinum. It was such a massive hit. People look at it like, yo, damn, he got to do that again, right? In actuality. You got a record, another record that go gold, but that's that's a gold, that's a gold record. This is true. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm writing records for people that's going platinum. You know, that's a that's that's pretty good. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like for the people who don't know that a hit takes time, mm. right? You got it didn't take off until a whole year after it was released. Mm -hmm. You know, for my core fans, they know like, you got it was not my best song, and it isn't my best song. When you talk about sheer like, um, you know, instrumentation and lyrics and just true meaning behind it, it just had a, it had you got it was released in the in the right season. Tommy. It was time. It was it was the right Perfect season for you got it. It was the time. It was the Me Too movement. It was the the guys you know, uh, bashing the women and this and the third. And then you now you got a guy who comes out with a song uplifting them. Mm. It was the right season. So what people have to understand is listen. That was just one of my seasons. Mm. I got more seasons left. You know what I'm saying? I got more seasons left. Understand that. And respectfully, 
you know, you heard you got it. Go listen to some more music. You know, go check some more music out, man. See what you think. You had a couple uh, projects I wanted to talk to you about. Yo, yeah. listen, do me a favor, right? Yeah. You gotta um use me like uh Boosie does Vlad, right? Yeah. Just you gotta just keep coming back. Just yeah. keep coming back. Because we got so much more, Absolutely. bro. Absolutely. I'm bro. Absolutely. We got a lot. Like, it's so much nah, more, but time is short, we gotta get out of here. Vito, let them know how to follow you and everything. Yo, yo, what's poppin', man? This is with Vito. Everything is Vito the Singer. That's V-E-D-O-T-H-E-S-I-N-G-E-R. That's Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, everything. Shit was amazing, man. You yes, made sir. you made it worth it. My dog. You, you got it, dog. No pun intended. Vito, J-Hill, podcast, this is a wrap. We out. Yeah.